Is it worth playing World of Warcraft Dragonflight in 2024 and how does it feel for a returning player? Numerous changes have unfolded over the last two decades encompassing both positive and less favorable developments. Let's find out. To be honest, back in 2010 with the release of Cataclysm, I stepped away from the game and had an on-off relationship with every expansion, engaging in occasional leveling and checking out the game's evolving story, except for Shadowlands. Upon rejoining Classic, the experience felt somewhat different. It's challenging to pinpoint whether it's due to my age or changes in the community, but I decided to leave it be, cherishing the fond memories and moving forward. After immersing myself in the season of discovery, collecting runes and all, the overall gaming experience didn't differ significantly from Classic WoW. It essentially felt like Classic with different abilities. Don't get me wrong, it is a promising start for a new WoW experience, but the content wasn't compelling enough for me. I might revisit it later when they've introduced more elements to the Season of Discovery. So initially I thought I had acquired Dragonflight, but in reality I purchased the upcoming expansion which includes a level boost. I was eagerly anticipating elevating my beloved shaman to level 70 and engaging in dungeons and other exciting activities, only to find myself in an unfamiliar continent with a myriad of quests appearing on my screen and the minimap. I felt bewildered and clueless about what to do because the game provided minimal guidance. It only displays a what's new panel with a few details but lacks a genuine starting point. Overwhelmed, I opted to select a different character and level up once more. When you initiate the creation of a new character, contemporary options abound for customizing your avatar. Numerous choices such as hairstyles, faces, skin color and more are available nowadays. So after settling on my race, class and deciding on a name, a process that consumed about 5 hours, I was eager to dive into the game. However, I had to decide between two starting zones. One option was Exile's Reach and the other one was the original starting zone corresponding to your chosen race. It's worth noting that you cannot go for Exile's Reach if you are playing as a Panda Boy, Demon Hunter, Death Knight or Evoker. These particular classes come with their own unique starting zone, complete with a specific story and questline. I hadn't experienced Exile's Reach before, so I decided to give it a try. It's clearly designed with new players in mind. The game provides instructions on gameplay mechanics, offering a brief explanation of questing and combat while guiding you through your initial levels. Use Eviscerate now! This is especially beneficial for newcomers and I appreciate the appealing aesthetics of the zone. If you are considering entering the world of Warcraft as a new player, you must go through Exile's Reach initially before accessing the standard starting zones. Upon reaching level 10, the game directs you straight to Chromie to choose a timeline representing the expansion you wish to level from 10 to 60. If you are a new player, you must initially play through the Battle for Azeroth expansion before gaining access to different timelines. Also, upon reaching level 10, you unlock the talent tree, dungeons, PvP, professions and many other activities. However, there isn't a comprehensive introduction, leaving it up to you to explore these features. For new players, I recommend focusing on leveling through the zones until you reach level 60. Once you reach the Dragonflight expansion, you can partake in follower dungeons with patch 10.2.5 and join dungeons with NPCs without the need to rush. While you can attempt dungeons at lower levels, it might not be an enjoyable experience. Many players rush through them while leveling their 10th character. Follower dungeons are currently exclusive to Dragonflight, but I anticipate this feature will be expanded to more dungeons in the future, especially with the upcoming expansion, The War Within. The issue with this entire process is that leveling feels somewhat purposeless due to a complete disconnection from the game's lore. The game thrusts you into a world filled with characters and content you simply don't know. While leveling through Battle for Azeroth provides some insights into what's happening, the background the big why remains elusive. Conversely, the quests in Battle for Azeroth and those continuing beyond are very well designed and enjoyable to undertake. There is a substantial amount of lore present compared to the previous expansions. However, as a new player, the connection with the narrative is still lacking. There is undoubtedly ample space for improvement from Blizzard. Perhaps they could consider making levels 10 to 20 a replay of the major events that transpired in previous expansions. They could utilize Kroby to guide players through these events and afterwards players could choose which timeline they wish to delve deeper into. This approach would potentially enhance comprehension but even Blizzard seems to be uncertain about the unfolding events. Upon completing numerous quests and finally reaching level 70, you are poised to delve into the endgame content. However, the game fails to inquire whether you want to continue questing to further explore the lore. Furthermore, the game neglects to introduce you to the endgame content and this is a significant drawback. 
Upon reaching level 70 through questing, I found myself with a big question mark above my head, still feeling lost. What should I do? Are there world quests? What do all these currencies mean and what can I purchase with them? What's the significance of this season and what do all these quests in the new capital city entail? There is considerable room for improvement and Blizzard needs to address these issues. Despite being a returning player, I found myself completely lost. In such a situation, my only recourse was to turn to Google and watch YouTube videos to get started with the endgame content. This is quite suboptimal for a game. Wouldn't you agree? Yet, after investing a considerable amount of time in leveling, my curiosity led me to seek more and venture into the endgame content. I was genuinely excited about it, and with some research, I found a starting point. I headed to the Emerald Dream to complete the catch-up quests for Season 3. This not only provided me with decent gear, but also allowed me to delve into Mythic Plus dungeons and explore the new raid through LFR. From there, it became a journey of learning by doing. I unraveled the complexities of various currencies, Yes, there are quite a few and understood how to acquire and utilize them. I delve deeper into understanding the intricacies of different classes, both in PvE and PvP settings. Returning to previous expansions, I revisited old raids, farming gear for transmog to enhance my character's visual appeal, engaging in content from the past for achievements, mounts, pets and more kept me thoroughly occupied. The game offers an abundance of activities and boredom was never a concern since I resumed playing. The new flying system, Dragon Riding, adds an enjoyable dimension to flying and has significantly enhanced the experience. Patch 10.2.5, you can now use Dragon Riding in any expansion. The gearing system is well crafted and feels satisfying, opening the vault every Wednesday to receive additional rewards for completing raids, PvP and Mythic dungeons is a meaningful aspect. Despite the time it takes to acquire good or the best gear, you can sense the character's progression each week. At present, World of Warcraft Dragonflight is thriving. The gameplay experience is positive with enjoyable dungeons and raids and questing doesn't feel excessively time consuming. It's now more accessible, particularly for those with limited time. The visuals remain impressive for a game that's nearly 20 years old. Notably, there is a vibrant player community in Dragonflight and WoW retail is far from dead. Even during the early hours on a midweek day, around 5am finding groups for Mythic Plus or other activities is quite feasible. However, the only aspect I find lacking in this game relates to the points mentioned earlier about guiding players through all the relevant content. There is no avoiding the need to resort to online searches for basic information as the game itself doesn't provide adequate guidance. Indeed, I'm aware it's an MMO and for certain activities, achievements or other aspects, one might need to consult online guides. The game cannot provide every detail and that's perfectly understandable. However, the basic elements should be incorporated offering new or returning players a solid starting point. I've consistently attempted to re-engage with WoW with each expansion following Wrath of the Lich King and the only expansion that held my interest for a significant period were Legion and Mists of Pandaria. They were truly exceptional. Now with Dragonflight, I find myself addicted once again. I can't seem to put the game down, constantly immersed in farming achievements, exploring various activities, acquiring new mounts and tackling mythic dungeons. My focus isn't on obtaining the best gear for my class, I simply want to enjoy the game at my own pace. Playing World of Warcraft in this manner opens up endless content for exploration and that's what I appreciate. Whether it's collecting all the achievements in the future or becoming a battle pad master, the game offers an array of activities, allowing me to decide between a relaxed and chill evening after my 9 to 5 job or immersing myself in the intensity of Mythic Plus dungeons, PvP or raids. The diversity of content World of Warcraft provides is what solidifies its status as one of the best MMOs even after almost 20 years. I'm delighted to be back and continue my journey through Azeroth. Here is my advice, if you are new to retail WoW or a returning player and you've purchased the expansion with the level boost, refrain from boosting your favorite character right away. Instead, consider leveling a new character first or advancing an existing one once you've experienced some dragonflight content and delved into some endgame activities then think about using the boost on the character you're eager to play next personally i made the mistake of immediately boosting my beloved shaman a character with over 100 days of playtime and i haven't played this character since that boost until today in summary, the game offers a wealth of content despite its challenging in guiding players through various aspects, 
particularly the lore and the endgame once reaching the maximum level. If you invest the time to familiarize yourself with the aspects, the game opens up a plethora of things to explore. Numerous stories to experience and a multitude of activities including in-game events, leveling up professions, farming reputation for different factions that yields mounts, pets and more. Nowadays as a solo player you have ample solo content available and this has been enhanced further with the recent patch 10.2.5 and the addition of follower dungeons. Moreover, there is a promise of more solo content with the upcoming expansion in August this year. While I wouldn't definitely say that this is the best expansion ever, it certainly stands out as one of the best. In comparison to my other favorites, Wrath of the Lich King, Mists of Pandaria and Legion, Dragonflight is exceptionally good. It reflects Blizzard's commitment to the game's improvement, especially in the wake of the downturn with Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands. How was your experience when you returned to Azeroth? Write it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and if you want to see more World of Warcraft content, smash the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.